Look at this system we have here. We study the migration system of butterflies. The system is the butterfly lays an egg. They lay their eggs on milkweed. Then the egg hatches, a little caterpillar crawls out, and then when there's a chrysalis, when the chrysalis opens, it'll be a butterfly. If our problem at the beginning of the year was that people came along and pulled out some milkweed, what else is affected? Who else felt like their string got really loose just now? When the monarch butterflies lay their eggs, they lay them on milkweed. If there's no more milkweed, the eggs will fall off. If there's no milkweed, they have no place to put their eggs. And the whole population will stop. I'm going to plant some milkweed. So inside here, we had hundreds of seeds. The monarch butterfly cycle is in a big system, the ecosystem. It's sad how our environment is going to be different in a couple years. It's getting worse. It's not getting better. Yeah, it's kind of scary because the polar ice caps are starting to melt. Not that many people are looking at it from the big picture. Certainly some people are benefiting from the destruction of the earth. It is scary what's happening in the world, what's happening to our environment. There are seven billion people just like you who's sharing the same space and everybody has the same rights. Third world countries are going to have increasingly less water. We need the wide scale paradigm shift of the way people think. My hope and dream is that the world can be better that there'll be good in the world. The teachers in this school, you're trying to do something that's never been done before. Prepare young people for biosphere consciousness. You're trying to create the possibilities of a generation who can heal the planet, restore the earth, save our species. The mission begins here in this school. The raw spiral curriculum centers on the narrative of cultural history, which unfolds chronologically through the grades. Each discipline is integrated with the cultural history narrative, providing a global 21st century systems thinking-based curriculum. If we are studying a particular culture in a historical time period, say the golden age of Islam in Baghdad, we are also studying the science that was occurring at the House of Wisdom, the mathematics, the astronomy, Middle Eastern food, wellness. We're looking at art of the time and architecture, spiritual beliefs. While gaining the skills and knowledge native to each discipline, raw students examine the world as a hierarchy of interconnected systems, both natural and cultural. You'll be trying to think, rather than in terms of causation, in terms of systems dynamics. The evolution of consciousness serves as a cohesive glue for the curriculum that connects a thematic from grades K through 12. There are many threads that run through the curriculum, like art and architecture, or philosophy and spiritual beliefs. In a particular time period, these threads connect horizontally, but there's also the vertical story. The sustainability thread tries to emphasize how humans have interacted with and been influenced by the environments in which they live. Because we're studying early humans, we are looking for good shelters and where the highest peaks, where they would either get warm or defend themselves. If there was a little moss, they could have used that as their roof. So as we go through the thread, we look at how humans have lived in their environments, how they've used the natural resources. We're studying the Renaissance and rebirth. The Prince is written by Machiavelli. We connected the Prince to our game. Every factor that's in the game is like a node, and so they're all interconnected, like a system. Anybody have trade routes? If you want to play money on your trade routes, you can put them down right and here. And there are six city-states you could choose from, and I was Venice. Here's the event card for this round. It's going to allow your city state to access additional timber to expand your trading fleet. So you can make a greater profit on those trade routes if you decide to cut down more trees. I mean, you do have trade routes right now. You have two of them right now. Yeah. Do you want to expand it? Yeah. yeah. What are you guys going to do? 
We're gonna We're cut down, down trees. trees. We're gonna cut down trees. <laughs> we needed a timber to make the ships that are needed to actually have a trade route. Write down an amendment sheet, whether yes or no, to you cutting down trees, all right? What will happen here, from this point on, um, there's a 50% chance that you've used all of your timber. Also, from this point on, there's a 20% chance of flooding because of deforestation of your, of your area, okay? All right, 20%. 13. Oh! All right, so, because you guys cut down trees, will lead to flooding when it rains in your area, which means that you lose this round. You're out of this round. In the short term, if you cut down the timber, you've got economic gain. But in the long term, the ecological damage is going to create more economic damage because you're going to have to pay for rebuilding buildings after a flood or replanting forests to stop the flooding. In science class, we learned about how the soil affects how water can travel through it or around it or off it trying to slow down the water enough that the root systems, the plants have a chance to capture the moisture they need. But at the same time, we don't want it to pool on the surface where it can just wash away. What would be your guess as far as which material is gonna pass the quickest? The largest rocks. Think, yeah, the piece. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay. With their integrated and systems thinking foundation, Raw students can grapple with and interpret the complexity of the world today. We are asked to assume the courage and the intelligence to resolve today's many geopolitical and economic crises. We just watched the Pope in class. And why did it speak so strongly to your group? He's kind of explaining that we're abusing our planet to its limits and that it, we just can't go on like this. Yeah. I think what he's trying to say is that the Earth doesn't need us, yeah. but we need the Earth. The values that the Pope talked about were a lot of the Ross core values, like courage, integrity, responsibility, respect, pretty much all of them. You use the core values for everything especially to care for the planet. We are all interdependent. Do you know that? Taking care of our world, taking care of our animals, taking care of our elements is actually taking care of yourself. I'm going to spend a little bit of time today talking about the Anthropocene epic. And the scientists who are advocating a new epic are saying that humans and human activity are dominant in shaping the planet. When do you think it started? The that industrial revolution. Industrial revolution. That is good. Agriculture. Agriculture. World, World War II. World War II. What happened? How did it end? Nuclear. That's right. Nuclear power. But there's also another concept called the age of sustainable development. By practicing the Ross core values in conjunction with their systems thinking based approach, students respond to the challenges of the world with empathy and a sense of responsibility. We were heading up the Peconic River. All of us were like super excited. We didn't know what was going to happen. There were like all these dead fish just lying there. I felt really sad and motivated to do something. It was really sad. It was because there wasn't enough oxygen and there was too much nitrogen. And when the nitrogen increases, the oxygen decreases. People are fertilizing their lawns. And then when it rains, it will go down into the water. And then that small action that we did is going to be a lot more than we thought. It made me feel like I needed to do something about it. I couldn't just leave them there and I'd be like, oh no, let someone else do that. We made a video. We sell popsicles. We made the popsicles to raise money for Defend H2O. So we want to save our water and defend it. I, I, I'm just angry at humans, at the world, for what we're doing. But there are definitely ways that we can go about things to fix it. Everyone's constantly taught to think of clear-cut solutions on how to fix things, not for the long run, but the immediate problem. How can I immediately fix it right now? Which isn't how we should be thinking. We should think about the long-term effect. Ross students are endowed with essential technical and critical skills and trained to explore and create innovative solutions. So what is the process of DNA barcoding? An organism is sampled, DNA is extracted, 
and then that sequence DNA creates a unique barcode for each species. Get the photographs of these species and try to match it. Okay. That's awesome. Great. The Ross students, they're developing the next generation of, of solutions. It's called Autonomous Reef Monitoring Structure. It's basically a standard structure to monitor um, the biodiversity and the development of um, the species on one single structure. I have to wait for a few months when I retrieve the arms. Uh, I saw a lot of species hiding in there like crabs and fish. So it got me really excited. And then identify them, take picture, document every species. We're trying to build a a wearable power generator that creates one watt of energy. You take the voltmeter and see how much power you're getting off of those batteries right now. We're going to be learning how to save energy, reuse energy, and we can use these, a wonderful bike that can charge all the things that are in your household. Basically a, an exercise bike frame and a converter. And now we can use human power, kinetic energy, to produce a lot more power. So we were only doing this for two minutes. And she got that high. Yeah, she did. She did that Really much. cool. Yeah. With my project, I'm doing a transportation network. I'm trying to let the teenager understand how much carbon footprint they will produce. By train, by bus, by airplane, those kind of different transportation. And try to save the world. I researched, designed, and built a hydrogen fuel cell system. I spent the month of August living free from modern amenities, tending a garden, milking goats, and fishing while keeping a blog of my daily activities through a solar-powered computer. We expose fish to elevated CO2 levels, lowering the pH. We're seeing a 50% decrease in survival. Ross's commitment to innovation in education means that the school itself is always evolving. Ross faculty epitomize the principles of lifelong learning by continually taking part in professional development courses and expanding their pedagogic approaches. We have these brilliant speakers and we look at the curriculum from all sorts of directions. Ni hao ma! It's all about imagination and then about directing that imagination for a certain purpose. That's what creativity is all about. So we have economists and we have neuroscientists and we have anthropologists and it's just a great mixture and a great way to look at this, this model. As a teacher, you should always be learning and you should always be growing. Systems Thinking, a new way of thinking about world cultural history, current events, and the systems that we live in using the metaphors of complex dynamical systems theory. Ross School faculty take a six-month course on chaos theory, complex dynamical systems, and systems modeling developed by Ross School mentor Ralph Abraham, a mathematician and chaos theorist. We are training people for a future, to create a future, to have a future, to avoid collapse, and to do that, we want to provide them with an understanding of the world we live in as a system, with its threats, with the interconnection of all things. We offer about 150 hours of professional development to teachers a year, and that's planned program professional development that they would take as a whole group, in divisions, in domains, because it's not just about the student as a learner, it's about the teacher as a learner. Learning never stops. Uh, uh, that's one of the lessons of neuroscience. One of the strengths of Ross is that we're a research school, a school where teachers and uh, students and researchers work together to figure out what questions people would like to ask about the effect of the school experience. They have ideas and you and guide them individually, more or less. We're trying to make it so that a ninth and tenth graders have a little bit more building blocks. They have great ideas, but sometimes they need to build up more skills to get to where they are. The Ross School is a petri dish for expanding our notion of how to teach and how to learn. In a laboratory school, there are opportunities to try things, to attempt an experiment or a theme for a year and test it. Ross is connected to a global network of mentors who have been training teachers and facilitating the continual development of the Ross model for 25 years. Failure to connect and ease the transition of large, growing numbers of children of color, immigrant origin children, refugee origin children, to the narrative of the nation, of who are we as a nation, constitutes possibly the most important problem. This year, in 2014, we have the largest number of refugees since World War II. 
51 million people are considered refugees in the world today. But today I'm going to talk about the ones that move because of environmental reasons. Going back to Dr. Koizumi was saying about empathy, that, that it is not that the subject that we are teaching, but really we are helping these students to grow as a, a part of the community. And also the ethics must be very important to solve the sustainability issues. What we're here to do this week is to listen, to learn, to question, and to develop the sustainability thread across the entire curriculum. We're trying to find not only where the issues of sustainability actually occur, but the rationale behind it. Where does this connect not only within this grade, but where does it connect before and afterwards? Faculty continue to expand and refine the Ross Spiral curriculum. Recently, they collaborated with outside scholars on the sustainability thread within Ross's integrated Mandarin curriculum. So the goal for the morning session is to look at the Mandarin curriculum that you have developed, and we're going to look at integration, threads, and the histomap. We are using the contemporary context but looking back, mm -hmm. linking back, mm -hmm. and linking to the future as well. We look at modern Chinese society. When we talk about migrant workers, we start by looking at migration from different times and from different regions of the world. Then we zoom in, look at China. The theme of sustainability development comes in. How can we help China and any area that need that help to grow and develop in a more sustainable way. Our students not only learn the language, they will be proactive when it comes to providing global solutions. Ross Institute is currently collaborating with schools across the globe. We are in Havana with the Ross Institute and the Ross School, developing our relationship with Cuban educators in an exchange of ideas and best practices. This is work that will take tremendous collaboration and that we are uniquely situated to participate in. Los grandes desafíos de eh, como maestra en nuestra escuela es educar al niño para el futuro. Eh, nos han invitado de la escuela Ross eh, para tener un intercambio de, de conocimiento con los educadores de, de preescolar y de primaria. Hemos aprendido cosas nuevas que en nuestro país la podemos llevar para trabajar con nuestros niños. Uh, my name is Ken Kawati. Um, I'm the program manager for our secondary students at Te Kapuhu Fe Tu. Perhaps we could collaborate on a, on actually on a functional project, yeah. like a data outpost in New right. Zealand. Yeah. Sustainability of the environment is also quite important to Māori people and to ensure that it's successful for our future, I think now's the time to, to do the work. The reason why we're here is to see what reciprocal learning uh, can happen between Ross and ourselves. In particular, we'd like our kids to get connected with the sustainability efforts, uh, environment, social entrepreneurship, and becoming global citizens, really. We're starting off here at the Ziggurat of Ur, the early Mesopotamia, which is now southern Iraq. The Ross model was adapted at Ross Tiensta Gymnasium in Sweden. Because we are in a Ross school, we do a lot of integrated projects. You get to analyze something and think outside the box. I can connect things to each other. You can actually see how the world developed. Because of the global scope of the spiral curriculum, all world cultures can be studied through its structure. It can adapt to any regional context and accommodate diverse, multicultural student bodies. Ross Learning System is a complete digital curricular package, providing the tools necessary to adapt the Ross model. It will be released in 2016. Ross Learning System is all of the parts that a school would need to really teach the Ross curriculum. We are working on digitizing over 100,000 pages of curricular content, and we have over 6,000 image assets as well. 
All the units in the curriculum are linked to professional development modules. There's video content that the teachers will be able to click in and play. There are annotated walkthroughs or slideshows. There will be curriculum links. We are making an online resource so that we can more readily share it with others. We can be partnered with other schools more quickly and more, I would say, comprehensively. We're talking about a new planetary culture and consciousness, and it takes a different style of learning, it takes a different style of teaching, and it takes a different awareness about the world to truly be successful in doing that. As part of the sustainability initiative, we, one of the projects we were tasked with was to create an interactive tool. In the top right corner, you can type the name of your hometown, so East Hampton. Ecological sustainability, the first question is, how sustainable is energy production for the area? So the point of the interactive is basically trying to determine the sustainability of the area. There are four different sections of sustainability that are being rated. If you can see the economics of an area, the political aspects of it, the culture and the ecology, it's quantitative and qualitative data, so you have to do research to support your answer. In terms of sustainability, everything's very interconnected. We want to add links between the different um, domains. If there is a problem with the economy, you can see how it affects the ecology or the culture. Just basically showing the balance of things. I think it's quite a, a powerful visual for people to get a quick snapshot of the health or not of an environment. The process behind it is, is going to allow many people to get into the, the discussion around climate and its integrated problems and, and issues. It's the first one of its kind. Anyone can use this. All you have to do is make an account, do the research and rate your own town and see how sustainable it is. The Ross Sustainability Curriculum and Interactive Tools are open source and serve as a call to action. We firmly declare the Ross Declaration of Principles concerning sustainability of our global environment. What you're doing here at Ross is, is spectacular because it's trying to raise those children that will transform the world. We want a higher level understanding of the world we live in, and that's the purpose of our education. It's our fault that we made most of these problems happen, poverty, climate change, everything, so we need to find a way to fix it as well, to redeem ourselves.